I spent 100 days in modded Origins 1 block Minecraft with massive bosses, custom quests that allow me to get crazy relics like this infernal tier, enhanced mob spawns, modded crops, armor and weapons, and probably best of all is the fact that I make a ship sitting on a mini ocean. For starters, our origin for this video is going to be avian. As an avian, we can run faster than the average person and also float down to the ground when falling. In return, we are forever a vegetarian, can only sleep in beds above Y86. Six. And as a bonus, every morning I wake up, I get a free egg. Very early on, we got our first chest, which was honestly pretty bad because this has a chance to give you seeds and saplings. And we instead got eggs, which of course we get for free once we have a bed. Once I had some wood to my name, I expanded our island two separate times. After some more mining, Paul the pig spawned. And Paul, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. You are useless to me because the only thing you drop is meat and I'm vegetarian. Not too long after Paul spawned, I got another chest with seeds and a sapling like I was talking about earlier. I made sure to take the time to put Paul in a dirt box because animals are notorious for just walking straight into the void in one block. So you gotta be really careful. The next chest I got contained a bucket of water, which let me go down and put a safety block under the one block so blocks such as gravel didn't fall straight into the void. We then got a benevolent chest, which marked the end of the tutorial phase. And we were now officially in phase one, that being the plains phase. About halfway through the first day, I took the time to make a paxel, which combined the three basic harvesting tools in one, then it was back to mining. I basically did this the entire day, and during the night, Paul got quite a few new friends. I got some nice vegetarian options for food. Another chest gave me some more seeds and apples, and these apples actually become super valuable thanks to a certain mod later on. While mining, I completed the wooden reaper quest, which gave me a wooden scythe, which was actually really nice to have this early on. After this, yet another chest was packed with apples, and then soon after that, we got the benevolent chest, which most importantly contained a grass block. This is huge because if we ever wanted our sheep's wool to grow back, they need grass to eat off of. Then just as the sun was rising, we reached phase two, which was the underground phase. Day two started off with some good old mining, which gave me the stone age achievement. After looking at some quests, I saw that once I got 16 cobblestone, I could complete a quest for a reward of a stone helmet, which sounds unimportant. Trust me, I know, but soon enough, zombies are going to start spawning and let's just say they are a little bit enhanced. To prep for potential mob spawning, I decided it would be a great time to expand our tiny island into something a bit more spacious. While expanding, I spotted a goblin trader which had some great trades for the future, but as of now, this guy was no good for me. Thanks for the apple though. Now back to expanding. I mean, I love wood, it's so fucking delicious. Alrighty, let's get uh, back to expanding. That was kind of weird. Uh, after a bit more mining, I finished the stone dome quest, which granted me that gorgeous stone helmet. And right after I got my first piece of iron ore, which meant I needed to make a stone paxel alongside a furnace. Of course, the one time I try and be efficient and burn old wood tools, the paxel mod doesn't support it. I did some mining and got a super important food source with this mushroom. If you remember, thanks to my avian origin, I am a vegetarian, so the only thing any of these mobs are good for are their non-meat related drops. Since the animal area was getting a bit crowded, I decided to upgrade their space just a little bit to hopefully avoid any accidental crossbreeding in there because it was starting to get a little tight so who knows what could have went down, you know, things start slipping into places and then you have a cow chicken. And you don't want a cow chicken, that's uh, that's a monstrosity. Once I prevented that crossbreeding, I made what would be the tip of the ship. Bam, we have a nice, well, I guess it kind of just looks like a dick right now, but you know, this will make the glow up from dick to ship even better. I will say later on, I experienced a tragedy so big that I almost wanted to quit the world over 60 days into the video. The last thing I did on day two was some poverty smelting of my two iron. With that iron, I made some shears and turned my sheep into strippers, then built myself up to my perch at Y86 and went to bed. Day three, I woke up tweaking on top of my bed and dug all the way down back to the gorgeous Dick Island. Once down there, I did a bit of mining and then made some storage because my inventory was beyond full at this point. Some more mining commenced and gave me a pretty terrible chest here. I mean, feathers and mushrooms are basically useless to me right now, but something that is useful is this nice new shield, which wow, we were looking snazzy people. Eventually, our first modded zombie spawned and this guy was actually intimidating with that armor 
armor on, but thanks to the length of Richard Island, I really had no issue dealing with him. I was even lucky enough to get a rare chest plate drop, which is a really nice piece of armor this early on into the game. Now, my current goal was to somehow get some string because I wanted to get an upgrade weapon wise because while this wooden scythe looks sick, a stone weapon would be much better, especially if I'm going to have to keep on fighting these armored zombies. But hey, if they keep dropping me shields and armor, I'm not going to complain about them spawning. More mining led to another underground chest and this one gave us some string which was huge because now I could make something from the Spartan weapon mod. I ended up going with throwing hatchets which actually end up being so good and you'll see why soon enough. Some buddies spawned a little later and I contemplated killing them for some reason but decided against it. However, 30 seconds later three more spawned and I couldn't pass up on the opportunity for some good old target practice. Sorry PETA, your rules have no power on Richard Island. I don't care what you say. I'm not donating to you. However, to end the day off, I decided to donate my hatchets to these zombies. And let's just say they got railed harder than... Yeah, I honestly have no clue why I feel the need to try and catch my own projectile sometimes, but here we are catching an axe to the face. Day four started off with expanding the area that would end up being the back of the ship. Following that was mining of the one block, which eventually spawned a couple spooky spiders, which aren't really a threat during the day, so they were some easy kills, and more importantly, gave me string, which is going to be vital for making new weapons later. Since my throwing axes were about to break down already, I went with yet another throwing weapon, that being the knives. A little later, I got myself a chest with some feathers and string in it, which seems pretty lame, but both can be used to make modded weapons and arrows, which is of course awesome. Later on, two different creepers spawned and caught more axe to the face than a middle school locker room, and it was after that second creeper I realized that throwing items break one at a time and not all at once, so now I just had some extra knives for now. Two zombies spawned and I kept accidentally hitting myself with the throwing axes, which is about the only drawback these things have. One of the zombies dropped a special drop called Graves Dust, which can be used to craft some spooky voodoo sh**. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't think we actually end up crafting this. While mining on day 5, I completed the cold dome quest. I also smelted down all the iron I had, making sure to only use one piece of coal to be efficient with my resources. After that, I collected my fancy new coal helmet, which was really just a darker version of the stone helmet I already have. A benevolent gift marked the end of this phase and meant we were going on to the icy tundra phase. You know, you may think this map is completely useless in a one block world, which well, yes, you are right, but I will say it's kind of cool seeing the island on the map and you can kind of watch it grow as you build. I'm going to use this later in our build and it's going to be cool to see what the one block world looks like when we have all of our islands in our big ship and ocean built. Once my Paxel broke, I decided to invest a lot of iron into a fancy iron Paxel and wow, we were looking sh**. Boys, yeah, no, not snazzy. This dirty ass armor is far from snazzy, but at least it provides us with more protection than Mormons after they get married. But we'll spawn later, so I made him a little safety pen until I got some bones to tame him. But since there were bunnies in my animal pen, this guy would not move. Next spawn was a stray who instantly started quick scoping me, and once that stray was gone, I traded with the goblin trader to get a steal of a deal on iron ingots, and then realized he was offering emeralds for apples, so I grabbed all my apples and picked myself up 15 emeralds. This completed the bougie helmet quest, which gave me an emerald helmet, which was a nice upgrade to what I had. Then it was time to uh, send the goblin off my island, because I now considered him trespassing, so I had the right to do this. Another stray spawned and killed my wolf friend. Now, since since I wanted his bones, I was really trying my best not to knock him off the edge of my island, but eventually had no other choice. Alright, let's pick up the pace a little bit here because you have already seen the vanilla side of one block, so let's try and get to the fun modded parts. I'll of course show anything important like the f***ing arctic fox massacring my chickens and bunnies. Thanks to that asshole, we have 8 eggs to get at least one chicken, otherwise we'll have no source of feathers, which means no arrows, which is not good for us. We were however lucky enough to get actually 3 Three chickens out of eight eggs, which is way better than I expected. I don't know the odds on that, but I assume we made out pretty good. The frozen chest gave us an ice block, which was huge for the program because this meant we could make ourselves an infinite water source. I got another frozen chest and this one had bones in it, which allowed me to tame a pupper. I got some bones from another stray, which I used to tame yet another pupper. And let's just take a little family picture here. On day seven, a monster party spawned and it was honestly pretty tricky moving around such a small island, but fortunately, half the mobs fell into the void. <laughs> I guess you could say it was a 
pretty bad party, huh? Sorry, sorry. I'm I'm due for one terrible joke of video. I, I promise that might be the only one. Okay, I promise. Now, I figured it would probably be a good idea to make this ship a bit wider because that mob party was much harder than it should have been due to the small size of our ship. But I mean, from what I've heard from women, the bigger the ship, the better. Uh, guys, I think size does matter. I, I hate to say it. But like, I'm just praying, I'm praying, and I'm not Googling because I'm too scared. I'm praying three inches is enough. I don't know. A couple more strays spawned, and after killing one, I leveled up my knowledge of death. I don't, dude, I don't understand this mod. I, I get talents later, you'll see it. It's, it's pretty cool, but like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this. But yeah, more on that later. Let's focus on not dying. Now, as for those perks I just mentioned, I put one point into the alchemist perk and another one into the bone collector perk, which gave me 10% longer lasting potions and higher chances at special drops from the undead. What this does, I don't know. The potions are obvious, but this other stuff, I have no clue, but I figured it'd be good. I should mention though that throughout this time I was bone mealing and chopping down spruce trees because I wanted to start building this ship and needed spruce wood for it. You know, there's so many different dick jokes I can make here with the growing and handling of dark wood that I love so much to use when I build. And I'm not kidding because I use this in every build, I swear. But I'm not even going to make it. Okay, you guys got this one. The next four days were primarily focused on starting the building of this ship. This started with collecting some wood. The goblin trader came by and gave me some more good deals, which I in return gave him some knives to the face i know i'm a great customer thank you the first thing on the ship i figured i should make is the mast so i can have an easier access to my bed because right now i'm just building dirt towers every night and it's getting kind of sad all right so this mast is kind of naked and unimpressive right now but it's good enough to place a bed so we're gonna take it just for now we'll upgrade it later and finally i could start working on the actual shape of the ship and i was gonna start with making the front deck which started with a staircase and a higher outline of the ship and then filling in what would be the floor the next day i realized i should have used slabs instead of full blocks so i had to go back break all the flooring and then replace it with the slabs once the basic shape of the front was done i went on to the back of the ship to start laying out the captain's quarters and upper deck i'm keeping all the building right now super simple just because i'm so strapped for material so once i have the shape where i like it i will go back and add in detail later and this was the super rough and i really really want to emphasize the rough part outline of the ship so far looks really weird without the bottom portion but we'll get to that soon enough some skelly spawned on day 13 and these guys nearly killed me and if it weren't for this random doggo i could have died so thank you mr doggo and as a reward for saving me i gave mr doggo a bone to munch i got a chest with bones in it which finished the bonehead quest for me which of course gave me a bone helmet really like getting helmets from these quests i don't know why but i'll take it i guess it's something can't complain about free stuff right it had similar stats to the emerald helmet but was honestly cooler so i decided i was gonna wear it for a while another skelly spawned and this time i had to fend for myself because i had mr doggo sitting i know it defeats the purpose of getting a wolf as a pet in minecraft but i always leave them sitting so they can you know not die while trying to help me fight mobs let me know if i'm the only one that does this because to me i rather just keep them around as my buddy in the world instead of risking their life to end the day off i got a benevolent chest which meant it was time to upgrade to the next phase we hit the ocean phase which meant we were gonna get some fun ocean themed blocks and hopefully i can use these to make our mini ocean in this one block world which sounds ridiculous saying it out loud but we will do it days 14 through 26 were all related to building this ship of ours because after checking out that last cinematic this thing needed some love so let's get into it starting off with chopping these big long earthy succulent next up was filling in the uppermost deck where the steering wheel was gonna be after that was putting in the flooring of the captain's quarters now what made this build really weird and quite challenging for me honestly was the fact that i was building it from top to bottom which just felt really unnatural for me and also really scary because one slip up and i fall into the void and die the next addition to the ship was the railing which was really basic but vital for the look of the ship and by day 16 i decided i wanted to change the stair colors on the entire ship ship from spruce to dark oak just to add some more contrast to the build because the spruce stairs kind of blended in with the railing during this process a random skeleton absolutely bodied me and if it wasn't for me knocking him off the side i may have died because my shield broke during the fight the morning of day 17 i started to get a bit worried about my food situation since i was stuck as a vegetarian but thankfully i remembered i can make bowls to farm the mushroom for some mushroom stew so needless to say i am going to abuse this mushroom for all of its 
yummy juices. Thanks to the chisel mod, I was able to add some variety to the walls of the lower deck. Next up on the list was to make the tip of the boat. I'm sure it has a name, but we'll just call it the tip here. And this was a bit tricky of a task because I had no idea what I was doing here. And like I said earlier, one slip of the shift button and I lose this entire world. So definitely didn't want to do that. Once that was complete though, it was onto the hull of the ship, which was by far the hardest part of the ship to build. Just starting the hole was a pain in my ass. The hard part wasn't filling in the base level of the flooring. Oh, no, 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 no. I wish it was. The hard part was f***ing curving the bottom of the ship so it didn't just look like a homeless person's box they live in on the side of the street. You know, we need that curve to make it actually look like a boat. And if you've ever done anything like this before, you know how easy it is to make slab structures uneven. So I was really making sure to take my time here. But I, of course, being the genius I am, built to the wrong point on the ship, which meant I had to tear everything down that I had just built. This eventually led to me spending seven more iron to make a new paxel. Then I rebuilt the front of the hole correctly this time, except guess what folks? Now the floor of the hole that I had already had laid down was multiple blocks too low, which meant it was time to redo even more work. Once the correct level of flooring was in, it was time to work on the butt of the ship, which again was a tricky process because I wanted to give this thing a nice booty like Kim K. Day 25 consisted of me filling in the side walls of the ship. Lastly, I spent the rest of the time finishing the walls and flooring in the rest of the ship and here's the updated ship wow I said ship 46 times there day 27 began with some gear upgrades starting with a shield which was then followed by an iron warhammer hopefully this thing is good because this was quite a bit of iron to invest here so let us pray for stonks I figured I would mine for a little bit and while doing so a couple of turtles spawn next up was making these fancy bridges and well these end up actually being pretty fucking stupid because you can't build them up more than a single block but before we get into this little rage about the bridges let's test out our new hammer on this goblin trader all right so back to why these bridges are stupid yeah so the stair ones they can't combine why i don't know apparently you can only use these stair bridges for like minor inconveniences it's like putting a little staircase on a curb like just a normal sidewalk curb like it doesn't make sense but apparently that's how it works here at this point i wasn't thrilled that the fact that i can only go up a curb's height but at least i will be able to combine the the flat bridges with the stair ones right wrong no you're wrong because why would the same mod be compatible with itself yeah like who does that who makes their own mod work with itself like that's just silly right oh and better yet these bridges acted as a light source for some reason once i was finished losing my mind though i could go back to my original goal with the bridges which was of course making a new island for my loud farm animals the island was eventually finished and i wanted to try and block the mobs in a more aesthetically pleasing way than fences and look you guys are gonna think i'm really stupid and i am an absolute idiot here but i for some reason thought that passive mobs would not walk past slabs and well don't ask me why i thought a half block would work when a full one doesn't let's just move on into turning this into a farm island instead of an animal island because i have already butchered this this of course started with breaking all the extra slabs off the top of the island putting a water source down then hoeing harder than single girls in Florida on spring break. And of course, just like that syphilis you got from the girl in Florida, the soil was drying up real quick here. So to saturate the dirt, I came up with this little water compartment in the corners of the island. The next five days started off with finishing off the water compartments. Once the farmland was set up, I planted and bone mealed wheat until I finished the corn hub quest, which gave me corn seeds. I then planted and bone mealed some corn, turned it into more seeds, planted them, and now needed to wait for enough corn to make both cornbread and popcorn to finish the next quest again this quest line is really important because at the end we get the water chalice artifact that is going to be huge for making our mini ocean i grabbed the last bit of bone meal i had and got myself three corn which allowed me to make some corn bread how many times can i say corn here i don't know while waiting for corn to grow i figured i might as well mine the block and not even four blocks in we got ourselves our first diamond which was awesome i was actually pretty excited for this phase for all the aquatic blocks that we were going to get for our our ocean and all the potential fish we could catch in water buckets during the mining i did experience a tragic loss of a squid because i was too slow to fill my bucket with water in preparation of future mob parties i made myself an iron bow alongside as many arrows as i possibly could just because ranged against the elder guardians is really important ground even spawned with armor in this mod pack so i'm honestly kind of worried that stuff like blazes or endermen or wither skeletons are going to spawn with armor which is just going to be disastrous i'm sure the rest of the set of days was 
was really just focused on mining the block while waiting for crops to grow while also catching as many fish as possible whenever they spawn so I could of course populate my ocean. I even made their own little tiny pond inside the captain's quarters because I'm such a nice guy. I'm so nice to fish I even invested three more iron to get an extra water bucket so I could save all the fish when multiple spawned at once. Now normally guardians and elder guardians are pretty tricky to deal with in one block worlds but since my ship was so unsafe in terms of being knocked into the void since it was so narrow it was honestly really easy just to smack them off the side. This one I actually had to kill and it dealt enough damage to me that I took time to smelt some cobble to make some stone armor. And this right here lads this is poverty snazziness but snazziness nonetheless you know we're not bougie but at least we got a decent fit on. Some proper fish spawn and while trying to save the second one the fucker hit me and I had half of mine just to toss him overboard for disrespecting me like that. So while mining an elder guardian spawned and my warhammer was the perfect weapon for killing this thing because it dealt extra knockback to enemies. After this guy it was back to mining until I got that terrifying message of an impending mob party. My strategy during this fight was to utilize the iron bow and focus on the elder guardian alongside his little midget bitches. I climbed the crow's nest to get the high ground and got to witness the last remaining guardian just hopping off into the void. Lastly were the drowned which for some reason were not aggro towards me whatsoever. I'm not sure if it was like a conflict with a mod or the fact that I was avian but I guess I wasn't complaining because these guys had massive swords which were far bigger than three inches I'll tell you that. After the party I farmed my last piece of corn made popcorn and finished the I heart nuts quest. Bro what the f was I thinking with these quest names man I was on something holy. My reward for the quest was an almond sapling which I promptly planted. Another elder guardian spawned and this time I completely knifed him off the ship. Day 34 I killed an enderman got a benevolent gift with two fish buckets and a trident and advanced on to the jungle phase. After that the rest of the day was spent cutting the trees off the ship because it looked a little silly. Days 35 through 40 were all focused on island expansion which has some surprisingly tragic moments. Starting off I I made more bridges and expanded left and began outlining what was going to be our animal island. Once the outline was finished I filled it in all with dirt and while looking at it the next day I realized that it wasn't even. For some reason I just can't correctly build this video so I went ahead and fixed that, plopped down our single grass block so our sheep could eventually regrow their wool and then went on to try and bone meal some nuts for myself and oops. That's all right. I can just bone meal that man. Nothing is going right today, is it? It's just it's just a rough one today. It's all right. It happens. Later that night, I was trying to farm some nuts again and even went as far as to make a catching wall and still managed to lose the nuts somehow. The next day, I used all the emeralds I had gotten from trading apples and made myself full emerald armor, which meant we were no longer poverty snazzy. We were actually bougie snazzy now. Like bougie. We're wearing emeralds, boys. Is it that good of armor? Not really, but it's bougie. After that, I decided to get this grass time lapse. And yes, I just made you watch grass grow, but you can't lie. That was kind of satisfying a little bit. Next important task was moving the animals to the new island but before we could do this I had to throw in the fencing. Once that was in I made myself a lead, a sketchy bridge, and started the great migration of imprisoned animals. This was a literal two day process and I swear half the time I was just battling trying to get the mobs past the turtles inside the pen. But fortunately by day 40 I was able to break the fencing down on the ship and I gotta say this made the deck feel a whole lot bigger and more importantly way more quiet. Lastly I noticed the almonds had grown again and this time I was was not taking any chances and while trying to prep I accidentally farmed the almond so I went and threw my nuts in the furnace and finished the burnt my nuts quest which let me plant some broccoli seeds. The next set of days were primarily focused on getting through the jungle phase because I wasn't really looking for any blocks but a surprise panda is always nice. That being said buddy you are way too big so I gotta send you down to the hole. A witch spawned and I thought him and I were gonna be best buddies but then he started throwing shit, so I started playing whack-a-mole with his fat Knows. I got an odd chest which had a skeleton spawn egg in it which is honestly not very useful but now someone not paying attention to this point at the video will see the spawn egg in a chest later and accuse me of cheating which is always great. Some horse was spawned and while waiting to try and tame one I swear this guy was trying to toss me straight off the side of the boat. I smacked around two more witches and one was kind enough to drop me his hat and let's just say this does not suit me because I look like an absolute dweeb. I should also mention that until we have our sail built I periodically go and shoot the sheep. I'm not going to show it every time because it'll get super repetitive, but now you know. Next up, I tested my basketball skills, shooting these eggs into the animal pan and learned that I just 
committed an accidental felony against these chickens. My least favorite part of the jungle phase is the fact that vexes spawn because these midgets are just little menaces. I mean, they hit like trucks. They're fast and they can go through walls. Why do these exist, man? I, I hate them. Not long after, it was time for a monster party, which in the jungle phase is actually pretty scary because you can have like three vexes coming at you from all sides. Fortunately for me, they all split up for the most part, which made taking care of this monster party pretty easy overall. Like these two over here were just doing their own thing and la la land i have no clue how they ended up there but now they're dead after collecting some redstone i completed the terminator cosplay quest which gave me a fire redstone helmet i also completed the wet hoe quest which gave me a prismarine hoe which was pretty nice not having to pay for a hoe for the first time in my life like normally they're pretty expensive and you know the economy's down right now so it's tough it's nice getting a free one day 43 i made a new paxel and pushed through mining until i got a benevolent chest which had a couple diamonds in it and now we were officially entering the red desert phase the last thing i did on this set of days was making a backpack for some extra on body storage the next two days were primarily spent making a chest room and farming i really just wanted the chest off the deck so i made this simple chest room with barrels and it actually looked pretty good like i was surprised at how much i liked this then the rest of the time was transferring and sorting all the loot I also made sure to trade with the goblin trader and farm up the broccoli and make steam broccoli which completed a quest. This quest gave me a banana sapling which I promptly slapped down. Days 46 and 47 were focused on doing some simple details on the ship. I basically just tried to do some wacky shit up front on the front deck and it actually ended up looking pretty good. Then on day 47 I made some crate blocks with a chisel and then filled the bottom of the ship with some crates filled with more booty than all the Kardashians combined. The next two days were continued work on the ship which started off off with some air detailing of the main deck after that was starting the setup of the sail which becomes disastrous and you will see why soon enough i know i keep saying that but trust me uh these next 20 days get a little interesting day 49 was me actually starting to put the sail in and if you could tell me right now the issue with my sail in the comments i will grant you 1 million fake imaginary dollars okay i will I'm a generous man. If you can do that, I will do it. Making a sail in survival mode is super tedious because it is a constant use of a water bucket. And you place a temporary block, then place the wall, and then break that temporary block. And all of this creates a very time consuming process. Like I said earlier, I was constantly shearing sheep. And once I got back to the sail, I still hadn't realized my mistake. Okay, I'm going to give you one last chance to guess the issue with the sail. All right, do you see it? Yeah, lads, it's fucking backwards. I made the sail backwards but guess what guess what even after staring at it like this and breaking it down piece by piece i still rebuilt it in the wrong direction as last time on day 50 yeah i broke it because i thought it looked bad so you know i'm gonna take the time and rebuild it and i still rebuilt the sail facing the wrong way now i still needed a lot more wool so i bone mealed some grass so i could get some seeds for wheat which could then be used as baby making steroids for the sheep and then look at this on day 51 you can literally see me realizing my boneheaded mistake here yeah dumb it's backwards now get to fixing it day 52 i instigated some breeding and then spent the rest of the day putting in some stair detailing days 53 through 56 i went back to mining this phase had some really good ores in it like emeralds and diamonds later i went over and farmed the banana tree which completed the big banana quest which gave me yam seeds i planted the seeds and bone mealed them right away because i needed to hurry up and finish this quest line to get that chalice relic so i could make that mini ocean i went back to the ship and cooked the yam which completed the yam time quest this gave me some tomato seeds which I, of course, planted bone meal. And now our next task was to create a cheese pizza, which takes a variety of cooking materials. Day 54, I invested a lot of iron into a cooking pot and frying pan, which we both needed to make the pizza. To get salt for the pizza, I had to cook off some water bottles, which took forever. Like, I did not think this was going to take that long, but trust me, I sat here for like 20 minutes. Next, I made some milk bottles, dough, two cubes of cheese, and lastly, the cheese pizza, which completed the Chuck E. Cheese time quest. And holy f***, this pizza had a total of... Of 28 saturation which is kind of insane the next morning i bone mealed the coffee beans we got for making the cheese pizza invested even more iron into crafting an all-purpose food processor and completed the starbs time batch quest 
The next quest item on the list was a toasted sandwich. I first made the butter toast, farmed enough wheat to make the two pieces of bread, and boom, we had ourselves a toasted sandwich. I gotta ask, is this an actual thing? Like, do people actually make toasted sandwiches? Because I love toast. This just sounds like too much bread. I don't, let me know if this is an actual thing. However, as a reward, I got hops, which was, of course, bone mealed and turned into your dad's soda. While mining on day 56, Susan spawned straight into my chest room and took a job without even asking. Get out of here, Susan. You're going to be trapped down here forever. Pretty soon, I realized that Susan would never shut up. So to avoid killing her out of anger, I went online and downloaded a silent villagers resource pack, which may have been the best decision of my life. Later on, a wandering trader named Donald spawned and was also making a ton of sound and unfortunately had a sand trade that I thought might be interesting later so i had to keep him of course i locked him in a box on the far end of the ship because that's what donald deserves the next three days we're all focused on finishing the sail followed by finishing the crow's nest which was done using the diagonal fence mod which looks so clean lastly i spent day 59 assembling the flag which gave me some trouble but by the end it looked pretty good the ship right now was looking pretty good the side still didn't look great and i needed to add some cannons to the deck and to the hole but I'll get to that later. For now, I just need to do the big basic stuff. But to do that, I needed to get back to mining. In this phase, villagers were starting to spawn, and these boys hurt. After killing some more, I completed a quest, which gave me some more skill points to use. And after that was a mob party, which ended up being pretty easy because the sorcerer dudes weren't even trying to attack me, which sounds nice. But I was honestly a little bummed out because the whole point of this mod pack was to make things a bit more difficult. So with these mob parties not attacking me part of the time, it made it a little too easy one of the zombies dropped a rusty mace which looked pretty cool and another villager spawned and eventually made its way into getting the same job susan got so arnold was given the same fate of living in the hole forever sitting in a ship little did we all know that they were in great danger being stuck down there but for a third time you will see that in the coming days and now we're actually really close to it so uh, i'm not just leading you on i promise while mining there was a explosion of armored zombies which normally isn't a big deal but with all their armor and weaponry these actually posed quite a threat i figured it was time to change weapons and i went with what i like to call the compensator 9000 it's only made of iron but at least it was nice and big the only downside was the fact that it was a two-handed weapon which meant i couldn't use it with a shield and these illagers showed me pretty quick that not having a shield makes a big difference while hiding on my bridge i saw two of my animals get pushed off by the illagers which was honestly just fucked up if you ask me like Vita, look i know i've had my issues with you and i don't donate to you and i kill your animals sometimes but you can't be letting illagers do that right so let's you know let's pick it up Peter. day 62 doris the wandering trader spawned and since i don't like any of her trades i took a selfie with her and then proceeded to uh excommunicate her from the ship i got four slime from a chest which completed a quest that gave me slime arrows which let me shoot arrows off the walls and floor like i was part of dude perfect lastly i got a benevolent gift with some emeralds and bottles of enchanting which i used to celebrate the coming of the nether phase and finally we are going to get into that disastrous event that i've referenced about 20 times now days 63 through 65 were a lot of farming and expansion starting off i made the yam jam using a yam and the vanilla i planted back on day 55 this gave me a cinnamon sapling and to make room for it i cut down the banana tree and since yam jam saturation was so good i made myself two more after that i extended two different bridges out from the farm island the first island is going to be a tree growing island and the second is going to be a mob farm the floor of the tree island was a combination of two chiseled cobblestone blocks which ended up looking super nice for how cheap it was to make then the last two things to do were to make little tree planters and of course plant the saplings now that i had an island specifically for trees i could clean my ship of the trees for the last time day 65 i made the mob farm island using the same circle design with some nice looking chiseled wood the following three days are focused on building the mob farm and mining the one block and this is where hits the fan for the mob farm i was using chiseled cobblestone so it wouldn't look like the all too familiar floating stone shit box and by day 67 i had ran out of cobblestone which meant we needed a cobble farm which in turn meant a lava bucket was needed from the nether phase pretty early on in mining i got my first piece of ancient debris which meant i needed to upgrade to a diamond paxel which ate up 70 percent of my total diamonds this also let me mine my first piece of obsidian which meant we were one step closer to an enchanting table i got a second 
second piece of ancient debris then the fateful day 68 rolled around which started off with some hoglins smacking the shit out of me fortunately one of them was bumped off the ship and then i tried to blitz them right away but they were lighting my ship on fire instantly so i had to focus on putting out the fires while also trying to kill them before they created even more fires eventually i killed them both and put out the rest of the fires in a panic i thought i had saved everything until i looked over and saw that my massive oak tree looked like your average california summer and people this is why you don't build your entire island out of wood but just wait because that's actually not the disaster that was like a walk in the park that was nice that was like a nice summer break you know don't worry though because the real disaster is going to come in like a literal minute okay i promise while mining some more a wither skeleton and some sick armor spawn and i'm pretty sure without this bridge there's a good chance i would have died multiple times because everything's just so scary with armor and oh fuck all right, so at first I was terrified seeing two of these spawn, but I was able to kill one basically right off the bat. So now I just had to kill one more. So like what can go wrong? Like literally all I have to do is not let him hit the ship and everything will be fine. And shit. at first, I don't even realize the ship is on fire and almost died of burn damage. And by the time I ate and got back out to the ship, disaster had already struck. And I had no clue on how I was going to stop this entire ship from burning down. The entire time I was fighting to put the fire out while also making sure I didn't die myself. At some point, I decided my only job was to save the chest from the fire. And by the end of the disaster, I didn't have a whole lot of ship left. And at this point, I genuinely, and I really do mean this, I wanted to quit because like building the ship was a pain in the in the first place and now i was gonna have to repair it but of course we didn't quit i think i took a couple days off because i was really mad but we didn't quit completely so the next morning i was so demoralized floating down towards the scraps of my ship but slowly began the rebuilding process i realized through that entire disaster i had completed two quests which was at least somewhat of a bonus one gave me an altar of light which is supposed to let me grow glowstone in the overworld not super useful but kind of nice i guess however the next and more exciting item i got was the infernal tier which let me convert abundant items into XP just like this. After messing with the relics, it was back to patching the ship. By day 70, I had done enough patchwork for now and decided to go back to mining and eventually got another piece of ancient debris, which was then followed up by a mob party. I ran as far away as possible and first focused down the gas. Once that was dead, I stayed out of the blazes range and sniped them with my bow. There was one hiding in the hole, but once he was dead, the rest of the party was pretty much easy pickings. Later in the day, two more spooky wither skeletons spawned, and I mean, these guys are equally terrifying as they are cool. After killing them, I got some more knowledge of death points, which I put both into the disenchanting ability. The next two days, I decided I was going to mine until I hit a new phase so I could stop worrying about these stupid blazes and gas, and my ship would feel safe. Hey, you mother... By day 73, I had gotten myself a benevolent chest with some stacked loot like nether scraps and more importantly, a lava bucket. This meant I could finally make a cobble farm and in other news, we reached the ideal, idol, I, I don't know how to say it, which meant we only had two more phases after this. Next up was expanding to another island where the cobble generator was going to be located. Now, I still have a lot of things I want to get done in this 100 days, so I'm either going to have to kick it into overdrive or just go over the 100 days because like I said, I want to complete everything, so I'm not going to sell you short because you've already been waiting for this video for like two months because I suck and well part of it's because of school I, I I went back to school everything's taking way longer now but I'm gonna be more disciplined with the scheduling day 74 I finished putting in the floor design for the island which I went with some random blocks I never use and I think it actually looked pretty nice I need more iron for the hoppers so I traded with a goblin trader made the hoppers chose mossy cobble as the build block and made the cobble farm I was constantly making trips back because I kept forgetting parts to the build and while getting water i learned that all my fish died in the gas fire from earlier which really made me sad because like i put all that effort and some extra iron into getting those fish for my ocean and now i have no fish but good news is a body of water we make later is so big that fish actually spawn in it that's kind of a spoiler but like we do get fish so that's good i wanted to continue on the farming quest line but wasn't quite sure on how to get the cinnamon until out of sheer dumb luck i figured out you just had to strip the tree with the acquisition of cinnamon i was able to bust out some nut bread snickerdoodles and churros the next day i completed the cream pie with banana quest and well i mean i guess a banana is pretty essential for a cream i'm just gonna stop we're just gonna move on with the 
but the video. After that, I bone mealed my new seeds so I could make the new dish. If you can't tell, I really wanted to get this quest line done today. And by the end of the day, my inventory was just a mess of ingredients and seeds. But good news was, is we completed the juicy eggplant quest. Finally, on day 67, I made Jack Harlow's favorite free date drink and got myself some glowing bread, which completely fills your hunger bar. To end it all off, I made a pumpkin spice latte. And this, this right here is accurate. You ever want to make your lady happy whether it's your mom or your significant other or just a good friend surprise her with one of these or any coffee for that matter because i promise you it works finally to end off this set of days i bone wheeled a bunch of wheat because we still needed leather for the enchanting table and okay we still have a lot to get done i need to finish the mob farm make an enchanting area make the boss arena fix and detail the ship and finally make a mini ocean and oh yeah that's not including actually killing a boss and maybe mining the one block so yeah, we have a lot to get done. Day 78 through 79 was literally just me running back and forth between the cobble farm and breeding cows. The next three days, we're all focused on building this mob farm. On the second morning, I killed a zombie and some disgusting cockroaches, which was much harder than it needed to be because I had my shield in my offhand, which made my two-handed sword hit like a pillow. But eventually I was able to finish the job. The next set of days, I decided it was finally time to finish fixing up the ship so I could come back and detail it later. In between making repairs, I also spent some time at the mob farm but like i said most of the time was just spent rebuilding days 86 through 92 were all spent on a rather large project that being the mini ocean i wanted to make around the ship now i realize this may sound weird in a world where there's nothing but void but just wait because it actually looks really cool once we complete it starting off i killed a couple cows to get some leather which eventually allowed me to get the magnet upgrade for my backpack which meant i would no longer lose half my temporary blocks the void anymore this is great i also decided to upgrade my backpack all the way up to the gold tier which increased the storage a ton the last thing i did with my backpack was using one of my three diamonds to get the advanced magnet upgrade i'm not sure if it was even necessary but this build was going to use a ton of temporary blocks which means i want to catch them all then using terracotta blocks i made a big old circle around the ship which ended up being more disappointing than me looking down in my pants but yeah the circle was just way too small like the thing in my pants so i needed to make it into a larger oval shape to better fit the boat so i extended out the short side, destroyed this half of the circle, remade the top half of the circle, and then extended the sides. The next day, it was time to start filling in the massive circle with temp blocks, which meant I needed a lot of of easily accessible material like jungle wood because this shit is uglier than a wet sloth like let me know if you've ever made a good looking build with jungle wood because i personally have never i mean i've never touched it because i think it looks gross but if you have good on you now if you're wondering why i would fill in the soon to be ocean with wood blocks it's not because it's gonna be one deep all right i'm not i haven't been baiting you this whole time trust me i'm not gonna hype up a kiddie pool the ocean's gonna fill all the way down into the void the game plan is to basically make this temporary floor so i can easily place source blocks on every single tile now the purpose for the border is going to make a really cool water tube effect that i think you're really going to like and finally by day 92 i was abusing the chalice artifact to fill in my ocean and now i think you know why i wanted this so bad because if i did this with just a couple normal buckets this would have taken me like 30 days and would have just overall been terrible the next set of days began with me completing my mission of filling in the giant kiddie pool now before i took the time to break all the temporary blocks i wanted to get efficient and unbreaking on my paxel so since i still needed books i went and tried to bone meal sugarcane to get some paper and of course in java you can't so me being the impatient person i am went into curse forge downloaded a mod that let me and boom now i could get my paper quicker and to be fair i think you can do this in the microsoft version so it's not like too crazy once i got some paper i got myself a paper sword from a quest which i can't imagine this is the most effective of weapons out there but if i ever did manage to cut someone with it i'm sure it hurt quite a bit because paper cuts are they're different man i don't know why they hurt so bad but they hurt while grabbing obsidian for the enchanting table i completed the schnazzy helmet quest which gave me this gorgeous obsidian armor grabbing my lapis for enchanting also got me a free lapis shield and my first enchant on the paxel got me efficiency four and i'm breaking three which was exactly what i was looking for then by the next morning it was time to break all this wood which is gonna take a while and it did take a while two full days of just beating my wood but hey once my wood was sufficiently beat my miniature ocean was looking amazing all right so like i said we are 
are going to go past the 100 days mark so I can get more of the stuff done I had originally planned, which is going to start off by making this ship not look so boring. Long story short, I broke a lot of things, replaced those things with better complimenting blocks, spent literally two days making a waffle sail for the ship, made some cannons for the top of the ship, put in some smaller cannons in the bottom of the ship, used all my rare resources to make the captain's quarters look more exciting. See, this makes me look super rich, but in reality, I have nothing outside of these blocks. I mean it too, like I don't have a single diamond to my name here. This is purely for clout because I'm actually broke. Then finally, the last set of days came upon us. Here we are, and my last objective was to make an arena and fight the Pharaoh's Rotnot boss in it. I thought about going on to continue mining the one block, but everyone's seen it, and everyone's seen the end dragon fight like a million times like do we really care i figure it'd be more fun to fight the ferris rotnot now just like one of my appendages i was referencing earlier the arena is not going to be huge but it's going to get the job done but once i had the circle in i went with just some random floor design with my remaining blocks i hadn't used yet and again like i said I was broke here, so making this build unique and not ugly was kind of difficult. Day 106, I was putting in the border of the arena. Day 107 was spent collecting cobblestone for the build. Day 108, I was putting in the walls. And day 109, I was detailing said walls because they looked like shit. Finally, once all that was done, I lit up the place with some soul torches. And let's be honest, this arena is not very grand. And it's kind of like a dollar store arena that was like sent back for recall because it didn't work properly and it's a little lame but it's good enough to fight in and that's exactly what we're gonna do to prep i enchanted my shield my trusty hoe my chest plate sword and pants was i particularly geared for this fight no i'm pretty sure in this emerald armor i have a decent chance of getting one shot if i get hit by this boss so simple solution just play perfect i made sure to grab all my best saturation food i had left just in case we happened to not get one shot and once i was ready i activated the quest to kill the rot knot and here we go one really fun part about this boss fight was the fact that whenever he knocked me up in the air i went flying because of my avian trait now the trick to killing this guy is waiting for him to get his axe stuck in the floor and then stabbing him in the back now this may seem really easy but this can happen in a blink of an eye which holy wow i'm just thankful we survived so yeah good thing we brought the food dummy got his axe stuck again so i gave him a nice poke in the butt played ring around the rosies for a while dodged his triple attack Got my pilot's license from flying so high and finally killed the thing. The next morning, I collected my reward, which was supposed to be a cute little pet for me to keep. But after setting him down in the captain's quarters, the thing just jumped out the window. And well, see that people is why we shouldn't have non pained windows following that i just spent some new time playing with my axe which was pretty fun and bam there you have it 100 well 112 days in hardcore one block modded origin minecraft how difficult can we make that title jeez can't tell i'm really trying to jam the keywords into the title so if you made it this far you know obviously but uh that being said i hope all you wonderful people did enjoy if you made it this far you are amazing and i want to say thank you to my patreons you guys are so kind for helping support me and just thank you if you made it this far guys stay safe out there it's crazy world out there it really is so stay safe stay happy and i will see you in the next one